pray. Yes, Heavenly Father, once again, O oh God, you are so gracious and faithful to us, O oh Lord. And you keep on revealing yourself. You keep making yourself faithful in us, O oh Lord, although we are not. Father, if you have seen any iniquities, unrighteousness, or evil thoughts, evil words, evil uh, actions, Father, in our lives, Father, cleanse us and purify us, O oh God, with your word. And Lord, this very morning, O oh God, this very day, this very time, O oh Lord, we're praying for you that you may illumine us, enlighten us with your word, and speak to us, O oh God, as we discuss, as we study your word, Father, in this, this simple passage, O oh God, about the, uh, the creation of man. And Lord, um, let these hearts of yours, uh, let, let these uh, hearts, O oh God, may you touch it, O God. And nawa, Panginoon, ay uh, masumpungan nila kayo, O Diyos. And salamat po muli, Panginoon, sa inyong kabutihan, sa araw-araw, sa oras na ito, Panginoon. This privilege, O God. And use me only, Father, as a vessel, O God. And uh, walang kakayanan na, uh, na umaasa lang sa inyo, Panginoon. And you know, you know my heart, O God. And you know us. And this is what we pray, we pray to you. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So, uh, so ito nga pong uh, passage natin is uh, alam na alam na natin. So, basahin po muna natin. Uh, sabi doon, Genesis chapter 1, verses 27. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So, Alam na alam na natin yan. The reason why I, I want to uh, study this or I studied this and the reason why I recall this is to see some uh, insights or knowledge and of course about the beauty of God sa kanyang creation, His creations, and sa atin, right? And our privilege also to, to, to know, to know why did He create us why man created us and why only man created in his own image, right? Not the other creatures. And so the scripture teaches us that man is not an accident or the result of some mindless process, but the creative work of the eternal God. Ang, ang, ang scripture po, ang Biblia ay sinasabi sa atin na hindi tayo nilika by accident or walang nag-isip mindless mind, walang na, na, nag-process sa atin, wala pong pag-iisip, kundi, kundi ang sinasabi po dito na ang Diyos, yung sa isip mismo ng Panginoon na ginagagawin niya ang tao at ginawa nga niya. That is the creative work of eternal God. So we are not accidentally po or rather randomly ginawa ng Diyos. Na sasabihin ng Diyos, uh, kumuha kaya tayo ng alikabok at tingnan natin kung ano ang magagawa natin sa alikabok na ito, sa bagay na ito. At tingnan natin kung anong bagay ang ma- 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 magagawa natin sa alikabok na ito. Hindi po ganun ang kanyang sinabi. We are intentionally po phenorm in the mind of God. Totoong inisip niya tayo bago pa, ta- bago pa man lalangin ang mundo, bago pa lalangin ang mga bagay na ito, ang foundation ng world, ang universe, ang galaxy, ang Milky Way, bago pa niya lalangin yun, yung bagay, mga bagay na yan is inisip na tayo ng Panginoon. So God created man in His own image. In the image of God, He created him, male and female. Kaya nga masabi natin na yung creation ni God, yung pagkakalika niya sa atin, we are so, um, we are His workmanship, right? Di ba? We are God's masterpiece. Di ba? Kung, kung, kung isang pintor, nag, meron siyang isang masterpiece na pinaka obra maestra niya. Aside sa mga kinreate niyang mga paintings, meron siyang pinaka isang obra maestra. So ganun po tayo. We are God's workmanship or masterpiece. So after God had created all the other creatures, the, heaven, the heavens, and earth, right? So, if, anong, sinong uh, unang ginawa niya na tao? 
He formed the first man. And at sino po yon? Si Adam, si Adam. From the dust of the ground. And then Adam breathed by God in his nostrils and he became a living being. So from Adam, God then formed, who's next? The woman, Eve. So to be, so ginawa niya si Eve to be a companion for Adam para maging may, ma, ng, may makasama si Adan. Okay? So mali na po yan. So kaya po nilikha ng Diyos, binigyan ng katuwang si Adan at yung po ay si Eva. So Adam and Eve. And then nung maporn na sila, di ba mamabasa natin sa Genesis 1.28, same chapter, sa verse 28, God blessed them. Ang sabi doon, and God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and of the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So pagkatapos silang, silang likain ng Diyos, pinorm, binigyan sila, pinagpala sila ng Panginoon, at sinabi, magmultiply kayo, magpakarami kayo. Magkaroon kayo ng kapamalaan sa lahat ng bagay. Kaya lahat po ng mga ninuno ng bawat tao ngayon ay nanggaling kila Adan at Heba. At kaya tao ang namamahala sa mundo, right? Dahil binigyan mismo ang Diyos ang nagbigay ng authority sa atin na mag-rule sa mundo. Yan po ang inutos ng Diyos sa tao. That's why we govern this earth. So we, hear here, so we see here na malina po sa Biblia na both man and woman were created by God. Malina po na God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. O kaya naman si Lord gumawa ng Ana or God created Ana and Eve. Hindi po. Ibig sabihin wala siyang ginawa na Steve or Ana or Ana. Or Ana. Kaya kung may pagrelasyon ng isang tao o mag-asawa ang isang tao, dapat Adan at Eva. Tama? Lalaki at babae. Pero the sad thing, the reality now, anong nangyayari sa ating mundo ngayon, you will see a lot of Steve. You will see a lot of Anna. ba diba? Wherever you will go, you will see them. Either in your area, either in the internet. And the strange there is that almost almost acceptable now in our society, this kind of relationship na at pinapromote pa nila. And we call these people as homosexual. Kung saan nagkikipagrelasyon sila sa kauri nila. Lalaki sa lalaki, babae sa babae. And sasabihin pa, you may, and you may say, Brother Joe, don't you see they are loving each other? They're happy more than now, than before. Diba? Yung pang sasabihin, sa, isasagot sa'yo. So is it wrong to love? Kuya Joe, yes, it is wrong. Because if it is against the law of God, it is wrong. And I'm telling you that is only lust, not love. Hindi po yung love, kundi lust po yan. Ilipas din yan, iligo mo lang yan. Sabi sa akin ng professor ko sa, sa, sa university. Kung may gusto ko yung gawin, kumakati yung katawan mo, iligo mo lang yan, ilipas din yan. Because that is immoral, kapatid, and you are only sinning. Kung tatanungin, kung tatanungin niyo po ako na kasalanan ba maging homosexual, basahin po natin Leviticus 18.22. Ang sabi doon, Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22, You shall not lie, huwag kayong humiga. So, you shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Ibig sabihin, huwag kayong Uh, sumiping sa kapwa nyo lalaki or yung babae sa kapwa babae it is an abomination po karumaduman po yan ang sabi ng Biblia and then sa Romans chapter 1 26-27 ang sabi po doon for this reason God gave them up to this honor uh, to this honorable passions for their women exchanged natural relation, relations for those that are contrary to nature And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another, men committing themselves acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. Kaya malinaw na 
kapag ginagawa natin mga bagay na yan, dinos honor natin ang melika ng ating ka kaurian. Kaya ang sabi, kasumpa-sumpa sila. And they will receive penalty for their error. So what awaits for those who practices homo homosexuality? And hindi lang po yan, and other kinds of evil. Ano po nag-aantay sa atin o sa kanila? It is the wrath of God. And He is going to pour out that wrath on the judgment day. Siguro sabihin nyo, wala, wala naman, wala naman mga wrath na lumadating sa amin ngayon. Mag-aantay lang kayo. Of course, um, we're praying na huwag nyo nang antayin yan. We're praying na we have to change our mind, our thinking. Kaya nga ginunan ng Diyos ang Sodom at Gomorrah, right? Tapos binabalik-balikan nyo pa. Tapos gagawin na natin. Nangyari na po yan sa history. Ginunaw na nga ng, ng Diyos ang, mundo, ang Sodom at Gomorrah. Tapos babalik pa pa ulit doon sa mga ganong gawain. Kaya nga sa Genesis uh, chapter 2, verse 24, hindi sinabi doon na pag kinasal ang isang lalaki, ay iiwanan ng lalaki ang kanyang mga magulang upang sumama sa kanyang asawang lalaki. Ito po bang sinabi? Yan po ba sinabi ng verse 24 ng chapter 2? Sabi doon, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. Hindi mag-join kay Steve. Di ba kayo, Will? Natawas kayo, Will. Did you see that? So both men and women were created by God and for God. At hindi lang po sila ginawa para mag-rule over the earth, para pamalaan ang mga ginawa ng Diyos. No, but also to find meaning for their existence. And that is to loving God, glorifying God, and doing His will. So, 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 so sa tingin nyo po, love natin ang Diyos kung gumagawa tayo ng mga bagay na ganun, ng mga karumaldumal, ng mga kasamaan. Ginoglorify ba natin ang Diyos sa mga kasalanan natin ginagawa? Napatago? That is not doing His will. That is completely revealing against His will. Did you see that? God did not create us for nothing. He created us to love Him, to respect Him, to fear Him, and to worship Him in return. Of course, we are the only creatures created that is so unique. Sabi ko, ang sabi natin kanina, that we, we are the only creat uh, creatures among the creation. We are the only creature among the creation that is so unique. Tayo lang po mga tao ang very unique among sa mga nilikha ng Diyos. Not the stone, not the trees, not the fish, not the animals, nor the angels or any other creatures, but only human. Why? Because we're created in the imago day. It's a Latin word or image of God. We are created in the imago day or image of God. Not only created in His own image, we also granted by God the privilege of living in personal and unbroken fellowship with Him. Di ba nakita nyo napaka-great na privilege? Na hindi lang tayo nilika ayon sa kawangis ng, uh, sa wangis ng Diyos, kundi binigyan din tayo ng privilege, yung magkaroon ng personal and broken fellowship with Him. So, created in God's image does not mean, o yung imago day, does not mean that God has physically body po or material being like us. No. Hindi po yan ang ibig sabihin ng natin dyan, na we are created in God's own image kasi nga tayo ay may physical body, right? God is immaterial and no composition of physical body katulad natin. So, ibig sabihin niya dyan na we are created in God's likeness kawangis ng Diyos, ibig sabihin, mayroon tayong soul and spirit. We are a spiritual being then Hindi lang isang alikabok. Hindi lang uh, physical body na may uh, kamay, may mata, may matay nga. Hindi lang po ganun. Kundi binigyan tayo ng Diyos ng spirito, ng kaluluwa. Kaya nga, before the fall, bago pa sila magkasala, sila Adan at Eva, they have a genuine capacity to know God. They can make fellowship with God. They can make intimate relationship or they, they had intimate relationship with God and respond to God in obedience. Adoration and thanksgiving to God. At noong maborn again din tayo, we do these things po. Kaya nga tayo na ipag relation sa Panginoon. Kaya tayo nagpupuri sa Panginoon. Kaya, tayo, kaya nga natin binamagnify ang kanyang pangalan. Kaya nga tayo nagbibigay ng thanksgiving, honor, and glory to Him. Because nung naborn again tayo, Siya po ang nagbigay sa atin yan ng kakayanan. 
And not only that we are, not only that we are moral being. So ginawa rin tayo na Diyos as a moral being. We ha- I mean, we have human knowledge, we can decide, we have desires, we, can- we care, we love, we express our feelings to others, right? To your loved ones, to the natures, to your- even to your pets. So we are moral being, yung pagkakalika sa atin. Kaya nga doon sa creation, from day one to day five, you will notice there, God does not say, let there be light. O mag- magkaroon ng liwanag at, mag- at nagkagayon-, nagkagayon nga. Hindi po sinabi yung, sa, from day one to day five, ang, sin- ang, sina- ang ginagamit niyang word, the phrase, let there be, let there be. Puro po, puro po ganun. Let there be ang sinabi ng Diyos sa creation. Pero pagdating sa day 6, kung saan ginawa niya ang tao, pinorm niya ang tao, hindi po niya sinabing, let there be a man. Kundi ang sinabi niya, let us, let us make man. And this communicates the idea of greater personal relationship. Kaya nga yung na-form sila, Adan at Eva, ang sinasabi, palaging ang sinasabi ni PJ, kahit yung yabag lang ng Panginoon sa halamanan, alam nila na Diyos yun. Kasi yung intimate relationship nila sa isa't isa, hindi nila sinabing na baka elepante yun or mga jerap yung narinig lang yung bag. Kundi alam nila at sinabi nila Diyos yun. Alam nila na Diyos yung duma- naglalakad sa halamanan na yun. Dahil ganun ka-intimate ang relationship nila. Kaya nga sabi natin kanina na si Adan at uh, naging pag-relation siya kay Eva at hindi kay Steve. Kasi yan ang dinisign ng Diyos pag nagigipagrelasyon ang isang tao. Nagigipagrelasyon siya sa isang ka-opposite sex niya. At ang gusto din niya ay magkaroon tayo ng personal na relasyon sa kanya, sa Diyos. Kaya nga sabi niya ulit, kaya sabi niya ulit, let us make, di ba? let us make, not let there be. So yung praise na let us po, yung sa Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, yung lalangin natin, One, two, three. Ibig sabihin po, may kausap ang Diyos dito. Let us. Kasi hindi naman niya sinabing uh, let me. Let me make a man. Hindi po singular. But sabi niya, ginamit niya po, is plural. Sabihin, marami. But let us. First, let us know kung sino po ang kausap dito ng Diyos. Ang sabi ng mga uh, sorry, Unitarianism or mga monotheism, yung mga niniwala na isa lang ang Diyos, yung one person lang, sabi nila, ang kausap daw ng Diyos dito na, sa sinabi niyang let us is yung mga anghel. Yung mga heavenly hosts, mga heavenly bodies. Now, kung ang anghel po ang kausap ng Diyos dito, hindi pwede. Bakit? Because the Bible nowhere states that the angels have the same image or likeness of God. Wala pong mabasa sa atin, wala pong mabasa sa Biblia na ginawa ang, ang, ang mga anghel, mga heavenly hosts in the image of God, kundi tayo lang pong mga tao. Ang tao lang ginawa sa larawan ng Diyos, sa wangis ng Diyos. Kaya sa chapter 1, verse 26, sabi, Then God said, Let us make man in our own image, in our likeness. And sa Genesis 3, 22, nung nagkasala na sila, ang sabi ng Diyos, Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. So that description is given to humanity alone. You let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness. So malina po na hindi mga anghel ang kausap ng Diyos dito. Yung the word let us po has two possible interpretations. First, it is a plural of majesty. Yung majestic, uh, majestic plural or yung tawag nilang royal plural. So what do I mean by that? By that, the majestic plural is the use of a plural, plural word, kaya ng pronoun na we, kaya ng pronoun na us, di ba? To refer a single person. Yan po ang ibig sabihin ng plural, plural, majestic plural. So plural noun po ang ginagamit ng majestic plural na tumutukoy lang sa isang tao. Basically, ginagamit po ang majestic plural ng mga kings, ng mga president na mga noble person or royal family o yung may mga authority, ginagamit po nila yung word na we or us or ourselves at hindi I. 
ang ginagamit nila. For example po, si Queen, si Queen Victoria, upon hearing a tasteless joke, yung walang kwentang joke, she replied, we are not amused. Ang sabi ni uh, Queen Victoria, we are not amused of that joke. So ilan ba si Queen Victoria? Isa lang siya, right? Pero ginamit niya we. That is majestic plural. She used we. It's the same thing nung sinabi ng Diyos na let us make man in our own image. So this means that God speaks of himself and with himself in the plural number. At isa sa common majestic plural po na nirefer ng Diyos, ang kanyang sarili ay yung Elohim. Sa Old Testament po, makikita po natin yan, which is the Hebrew name of God in the Old Testament. Elohim, name of God in the Old Testament. Elohim is the name of God in plural form po yan. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang isang Diyos yung word na Elohim. Kaya nga pagdating sa Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, ang sabi doon, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, or Elohim, the Lord is one. Yung God po dyan ay Elohim. The Lord, the Lord our God, Elohim, the Lord is one. So, ang Elohim po is plural form. Ibig sabihin, isang Diyos, the Lord is one, but in three different persons. Kaya nga, ang second interpret interpretation ng uh, word na let us make man, it is a reference to the Trinity. The creation involves the Father, the creation involves the Spirit. Kaya nga, pagbabasa natin yung uh, chapter 1 ng Genesis verse 2, Sabi po doon, <clears throat> Dirt was without, without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, and doon yung Spirit ng Panginoon, hovering over, over the face of the waters. So involved din ang Spirit. And lastly, of course, the Son. Saan po na natin makikita yan? Sa, Genesis, uh, sa John chapter 1. Kung pupunta, kung pupunta po tayo sa John chapter 1, Nakikita po natin yun na kasama ng Diyos Ama, ng Diyos Espiritu, ang Panginoong Jesus. Ang God the Son. John chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. Ang sabi po doon, In the beginning, yung pasimula, yung nilikha yung sandibutan, <clears throat> In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Yung Word po doon is yung Logos. Sino kasama niya? Yung Diyos Ama. At si Jesus Christ po yan. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. So nakita po natin na nandun, miss, andun na rin ang Panginoong Jesus. Siya po yung Logos dyan. Kaya nga sa pagtatalon tayo sa John chapter 1 verse 14 ang sabi and the word became flesh yung logos ng katawang tao so nandoon na rin si ang Panginoon Hesus do sa beginning sa so, umpisa pa lang so, doon sa creation kasakasama na sila ng Diyos magkakasama na sila ng tatlo kaya doon sa creation makikita natin na kausap ng Diyos Ama si Jesus Christ yung word or your logos binasa natin yung John right in chapter 1 verses 1 to 3 so kasama din nila ang banal na espiritu na nag-hovering sa ibabaw ng tubig. Yes, there is one God. We believe on that. But and three personal entities. Kasi po, yan po ang sinabi ng Biblia. Nakita po natin. Malinaw naman po, di ba? We believe in one God. We see the God, the Father is working. We see the God, Spirit is working. And we see the God, the Son is working too. They are involved together in working the creation. So therefore, it is clear that God the Father is talking to God the Son, the Spirit, and not the angels, not the heavenly hosts. And this is why we believe in one God existing in three persons. Kaya nga po tayo mga trin Trinitarian ang tawag sa atin. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, no? God the Holy Spirit. So I hope na ma-clear po yan, hindi po mga anghel ang kausap ng Diyos dito. Kaya nung sinabi niya, let us make in our man, in our own likeness, kausap po niya dyan ay yung mga, ay si Jesus Christ at ang banal na Espiritu at hindi po ang mga anghel. So moving on. Kaya gaya ng Diyos na nag rule sa heaven and earth, tayo din nilikha ayon sa kanyang kawangis ay binigyan niya ng kapamalaan sa mga ginawa niya. 
at nakuha natin yung pamumuno na yan sa kanya, right? Kaya we rule the, 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 the earth and not the animals. Pero hindi lang basta biligyan niya tayo ng privilege at responsibility na mag-rule sa mundo, hindi, tayo, hindi po tayo independent sa Diyos na may sariling pangamalakad or pamumuno, pagpapatakbo sa kanyang creation. Hindi, 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 po, hindi yan po, uh, okay, binigyan kita ng pamalaan, Kuya Will. Ginawa kita, binigyan kita ng authority, so ikaw na bahala dyan. No. Hindi po ganun. Yung pamamahala po natin sa mga bagay ngayon, sa ating pamilya, sa ating trabaho, at yung mga responsibilidad natin sa ating kapwa at sa Diyos, naka-align po yan sa kalooban ng Diyos. Naka-dependent po yan sa kanyang authority, sa kanyang kalooban. At hindi, not on our own independent way of, of, of ruling the, the things, your family. Hindi po, dapat nasa kalooban niya ng Pano, naka-align. At ang kalooban na yan sa atin ay maging, ang kalooban po ng Diyos sa atin ay maging mabuting ama, mabuting ina, anak, sa loob at labas ng pamilya, sa mapa, mapatahanan man o mapa-eskwela, sa trabaho man. Yan ang kalooban ng Panginoon. Ang ating pamumuno, ang ating mga responsibilidad, uh, responsibilidad po ay para parangalan at magbigay ng benepisyo sa mga taong nakapaligid sa atin at hindi maging pabigat sa kanila. Of course, para magbigay ng kaluwalhatian sa Diyos, kaya niya tayo ginawa. Yan po. Kaya kapag hindi, kaya pag hindi po natin ginawa mga bagay na yan, so absolutely, we are rebelling against His will, against the commandment of God, yung kinuman niya sa atin. Kasi we are not made for our own pleasure lang po, for our, to seek our pleasure. No, but we are made to give pleasure to others and above all unto God. Yan po. Kung babasahin po niyo Romans 11.36, ang sabi po doon, for from Him, si God po yan, for from Him, or si Jesus Christ, so, uh, for from, from Him and through Him and to Him are all things. To Him be glory forever. Amen. Sabi po yan ni Paul. Ang lahat ng bagay ay galing sa Kanya at ang lahat ng bagay ay ginawa sa pamamagitan Niya at lahat ng bagay ay para sa Kanya para sa kanyang kaluwalhatian. Kaya puro pagbibigay dapat ng kaluwalhatian sa Diyos ang ginagawa ng lahat ng tao. At hindi ang sawayin ang Diyos at lamangan ng ating kapwa. Kasi kung ang ginagawa natin ay hindi para sa kanya, hindi nakaalain sa pinag-uutos niya, hindi para magbigay ng kaluguran sa kanya, then may malaking posibilidad na hindi tama ang pagkaunawa natin sa Diyos. At chaos po ang ending niyan. Kaya yeah, maraming mga tao na hindi satisfy sa mga bagay-bagay. Kasi mali ang pagkakaintindi nila sa Diyos. Kasi ang kala nila, yung, yung, uh, ang gusto nila magkaroon ng bagay, na isang bagay para magbigay ng kaluguran sa kanila. No, hindi po. We must, if we ever think about, desire about things, it should be give glory to God. Yan po. So, ang ating pagkalika ay para magbigay ng lugod sa Kanya in everything we do. Because He is our Creator. We, he created us in His own image. Special po ang paggagawa sa atin. Hindi po tayo ang nag-create sa ating mga sarili at hindi naman tayo ginawa by accident lang. Right? Iniwala ba kayo doon by accident lang ang paggagawa sa atin? Na mga sinasabi ng mga atheist na nagkaroon ng Big Bang Theory daw o sinasabi ng mga physical materialism. Sila po yung maniniwala na may mga bagay na, no, na noon pa man, nang wala pa ang mundo. Meron na daw mga bagay na nag exist na noon na kayang gumawa ng tao. Ganun ba yun? Naniniwala po ba kayo doon? So by accident, by accident lang pala tayo. Walang nagplano na likain tayo. By chance and by random lang pagagawa sa atin. Walang purpose, walang pagkalika ang pagkalika sa atin kung ganun. Right? Kasi by Big Bang Theory accident lang. Pero bakit yung theory nila until now, theory pa rin. Hindi pa rin nila ma-prove. See? At ito po ang sinasabi ng mga atheist or agnostic at mga <coughs> mga evolutionist mga na, na mga walang Diyos. Na walang, nag, na walang Diyos at nag-create ng mga bagay na ito. So ibang-iba po sa tinuturo ng Biblia. 
Ang sabi, ba, ang sabi sa atin ng, ng sa ng Diyos na we are created in His own image, special, with the ability to reason, to, to communicate, to love. Hindi by instinct, gaya ng mga hayop na walang mga alam. So kung niniwala kayo na may by, na, na by random lang ang paggalika sa inyo, sa atin, by accident lang, ibig sabihin, naniniwala kayo na inyong mga ninuno ay galing sa bato. Right? You mean you believe that your ancestors came from a rock? na walang emotion, walang buhay, walang isip. At kung naniniwala kayo na, ma, na may mga nag-exist ng mga bagay noon, dahil hindi ito nilikha ng Diyos, bago tayo magawa, kung naniniwala kayo na by accident lang na nagawa ang creation at ang tao, buti na lang hindi by accident nagkaroon ang mga hayop ng pag-iisip, right? Nung makreate sila. Kasi kung accident nagkaroon sila ng isip, siguro inubos na tayo ng mga hayop ng, ng mga bis na ito. Di ba? Ang nature nila ay kumain. At malamang, nagrebelde ng mga hayop na ito dahil mayroon silang pag-iisip. Malamang, pinabagsak na nila ang pamalaang Duterte. ba? Diba? Dahil may mga taong walang awa, walang, walang awat, walang awang pumatay sa mga hayop. Kaya nga may, may, may uh, human, uh, animal rights tayo, right? So kung ganun, by accident lang, siguro ang nagro-roll sa atin, mga hayop, mga hayop na mga bees. At kasama mag-roll sa inyo, mga langgam, papayag ba kayo nun? You see that? Kasi it is very clear na tao lang po ang ginawa ng Diyos na may sariling pag-iisip, very unique, special. At ang mga hayop ay ginawa lang ng Diyos by their own instinct. Kaya isang kalokohan nga, masabi mong kalokohan, na walang nag-create sa atin, na walang purpose ang pagkalikha sa atin, na may, 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 nag-i-exist ng mga bagay noon, tapos aksidente nagkaroon ng tao, na-form ang tao. ba? Diba? Anong klaseng filosofiya yan? So my point here is that we are fearfully and wonderfully created by God in all these things. Nakikita niyo po yan sa Psalms chapter uh, 139 verse 14. We are fearfully and wonderfully created by God. Ayaw po ba ninyo yun na ginawa tayo ng Diyos ng tama at, at maganda? Not by accident? Not without reason? Not without the purpose? Like, purpose, like isang bula, na bigla na lang nawawala. So, and these people po, na claiming to be wise, they are claiming to be wise. Yung mga taong ito, nagsasabi na walang Diyos, they became fools. Sinabi po yan ng Romans chapter 1, verse 22. This is why I pity with these people. I don't believe that there is an atheist person. These people, they are just cowards and liars and selfish people kasi ayaw nila nang may, nang may mag-rule sa kanilang buhay. Ayaw nilang nang may may makialam sa kanila. Ayaw nilang sumunod sila na huwag kang papatay. Huwag kang manood ng mga bawal. Huwag kang uminaw. Huwag kang managrilyo. Huwag kang mababae. Ayaw ng mga taong ganito. Kaya ayaw nilang magparul, magpasakop sa Diyos. Kaya ang sasabihin nila, walang Diyos. Kaya ayaw nila sa Diyos kasi maraming bawal. At alam natin na galit ang Diyos sa mga ganong gawain. Right? Kaya ang gusto nila sila ang Diyos. Sila ang dapat masunod sa buhay nila. Kaya what these people do, they twist, they twist. They twist the word of God. And you know what? Do you know the reason why the wrath of God is coming upon men? <coughs> it is because Romans chapter 1 verse 19, it says, For what can be known about God is evident within them. It is plain to them. Plain sa mga maliwanag, malinaw sa tao. It is evident within them for God made it evident to them. Maliwanag po na ang Diyos nireveal niya ang sarili sa, mga ta- sa lahat ng tao. So when a person tells us of, or if there is one person tells, tells you that he is an atheist, then we need to make a choice po. What do I mean? Do we need to make a choice po? Do we believe him, this atheist, or do we believe the Bible? Which choice are you going to make? Kasi ano ang claim ng isang atheist? Ang claim niya is walang Diyos, right? But the Bible tell, tells us that he is not atheist. How? How do we know that he is not atheist? Because the Bible tell, uh, tells us that God made himself evident or plain to him. You see? So, may Diyos sa puso ng lahat ng tao. Alam ng lahat ng tao na mayroong Diyos. Kaya hindi totoong may atheist. 
Ang sabi ko nga kanina, they are just coward. Ayaw nilang may mag-rule sa nila. Ayaw nilang magpasakop. So this is the reason why judgments will come to us because God made himself known to all men and to all creation. And ano sabi? It is evident. Maliwanag po na nireveal ng Diyos ang kanyang sarili. Pero ang ginagawa ng mga tao, mga niniwala na ganito na walang Diyos, they suppress that idea about God. The Bible told us already 2,000 years ago that there is no such thing as an atheist. And I stand by my statement po. Because it is true. The Bible tells me so. God made us and He reveals Himself through general revelation. Yung sinasabi ni Pastor Arnold kahapon, that is in the nature, nireveal lang Diyos yung kanya sarili in the nature, in the sky, in the trees, in the oceans, He reveals Himself through them. God has surrounded us with the beauty of His creation. Kung alam niyo po yan, kung hindi niyo po alam. God has surrounded us with the beauty of His creation. That is why every time we look at the creation, we can say, what a beautiful creation. Thank you, Lord. Right? Nasasabi natin yan. Dahil may naglikha sa creation. Sa mga nakikita, sa mga tanawin. And not only God reveals Himself over the creation, but also He specifically revealed Himself in our conscience. In our conscience, cannot deny the existence that there is God. Because He is the one who put that conscience in our lives. Nung pinanganak po tayo. That we are created through Him. Kaya nga po, that's every time we commit a sin, every time we break His law, diba? every time nagkakasala tayo, our conscience is screaming to us. Why? It is screaming inside us that we are sinful. I am sinful and you are sinful. And all the people are sinful. So that we are without excuse. Kasi binigay po yan ng Diyos. Kaya nga kung may mga tao man na hindi namatay, na hindi nakarinig ng sita ng Diyos, paano sila i-judge ng Diyos? Through their conscience. Right? Kasi we believe that uh, faith is coming by hearing of the word of God. So kung walang, ma, walang na, nagmensahe o walang preacher na, na, na nagpunta sa lugar na yon at hindi namatay itong mga tao na ito na hindi nila narinig ang sita ng Diyos, still they will be judged by their own conscience. You see that? Kaya hindi, natin, kaya hindi pwedeng sabihin ng tao na yun na, Lord, no one tells me about you. No. Your witness is your conscience. And it is crying outside in, or crying out inside you. We have the fingerprints of God all over us. We cannot deny that there is no God. You cannot prove that there is no God. Again, we are not the author of our own existence. Hindi po tayo may akda ng ating pagkalika. O ang ating mga magulang, mga ninuno nila, o ang mga bagay-bagay. Kung meron man yung gracious, kung meron man, yan po yung gracious will and power of God who brought us into existence. Only that. So as God created in His own image, Therefore, we do not belong to ourselves. We belong to God. We, did, we do not own ourselves. God owned us po. Because God made us for His own purpose, in His own likeness, for His own purposes, and good pleasure. Now, the idea that God made us for His own purposes and, and, and good pleasure is not that, that uh, God is, uses us na parang pinaglalaroan lang tayo ng Diyos. O ikaw, Kaya Will, itong gawin mo sa araw na ito, tatawa ka. Tapos mamaya, Kaya Will, itong gagawin ko sa iyo, iiyak ka. Hindi po ganun. Hindi po tayo pinaglalaroan ng Diyos. Hindi po yan ang... He is not toying us. Hindi po niya tayo nilikha para paglaroan, para, para lang magawa niya yung purpose niya, yung good pleasure niya sa atin. No, hindi po ganun. He created us so that we can have fellowship with Him and to be with Him to eternity. Kaya while we are here po, we have the responsibility na dapat gawin at yung mga pinag-uutos niya sa atin. Ano-ano yung mga responsibilities at mga commands niya sa atin? Una, dapat mayroon tayong reverence, banal na pagkatakot sa Diyos. Si King David, sabi niya sa Psalms 33, verses 8 to 9, sabi niya, Let all the earth fear, matakot, 
fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. May banal na pagkatakot, let all, sabi ni Haring David. For He spoke and it was done, He commanded and stood fast. Sa Diyos lang po tayo dapat matakot, magkaroon ng banal na pagkatakot. So we see here that all earth must give reverence to Him. All living things po, walang except, exemption. At sinabi din ni Haring David sa Psalms chapter 95, verse 6, na dapat purihin din natin ang Diyos, i-worship siya. Sabi niya, come, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Kasi siya ang manilika, the Creator. At sinabi din po ni Haring David na maglingkod tayo sa Kanya ng may kasayahan. Sabi niya sa, sa Psalms 100, verse 2, We must give our service to God. Sabi niya, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. That is why we sing to God, right? In our church service. O kahit sa ating sa loob ng bahay. We give our service to Him. In singing or kung ano mang ginagawa natin, we're giving our service, service because He deserves it. And ano pa sa sabi? Ano pa ang dapat nating gawin while we are here? Sabi po sa Gospel ni Gospel of Mark sa 12 chapter 12 verse 30. Ang sabi po doon, we are told to love the Lord. It says here in this passage that not only God should love us but we also love God. We should also love God. 'Di ba? Yung Mark Chapter 12, verse 30, ang sabi pa doon, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Commandment po yan, kinuman po yan sa atin ng Diyos. Hindi lang dapat ang Diyos ang nagmamahal sa atin palagi, tayo din dapat magmahal sa Kanya. Inuutos po yan, commandment po sa atin yan. Hindi po yan, uh, hindi po yan isang palaisipan na mahalin mo ang Diyos. Kundi, utos po yan na dapat Gawen, dapat sundin. Then lastly, while we are here, our responsibility is, as God created in His own image, our response is to give glory to God, to give honor. We must give glory and honor to Him in everything we do. Yan po. Kaya pa dating sa Colossians chapter three verse seventeen, and sabi, and whatever you do in word or deed. Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Yan po ang sinabi sa atin ng verse. To give glory in all circumstances. Kasi siya po ang nagpahintulot ng mga bagay na, na yan. Kung ano mga bagay ang, ang nangyayari sa atin, sa atin sa mga oras na ito. Di ba? Lahat po yan pinahintulot ng Panginoon. Dahil meron siyang good purpose. And it gives pleasure to Him. See? At po ulit-ulit natin sinasabi, God created us. He brought us into existence. That is why the supreme purpose in life for any man and woman, for anyone who was ever born in this, in this world, is to glorify God. Yan po ang supreme purpose natin kung bakit tayo nagawa or ginawa ng Diyos. At hindi po tayo aksidente na ginawa ng mga sinasabi ng mga ibang uh, tao. You see, we are purposely created in the image of God. We are so special. Kaya nga, in return of this, we must, give, we must do our very best nga po eh. In everything we do, we must do our best to respond sa ginawa niya sa atin. Na ma-enjoy natin yung mga bagay na ito, na ma-enjoy natin siya. At makapiling natin siya doon sa kabilang buhay. Amen? Anyan po ang ating greatest hope, ang makapiling natin, ang makanig, ang ating creator doon sa langit. Amen? Glory to God alone. Thank you. So, let us pray po. Father in heaven, O God, did we believe, O God, that there is, that there is creations? Therefore, we believe that there is a creator, and that is you, Father. We believe that you created Us, you brought us into existence, not only to be, not only created to, uh, unto your own image, but also to make fellowship with you, to experience you, God, to experience you, to love, to love the you, to love the people, to love the 
the creatures of God, your creations. And thank you, Father, because we have a God like you, O oh Lord. And that's what we hope, Father, on that day that you will come. Father, thank you for this day, and thank you for your words, O oh God. And thank you for the listeners, the viewers, O oh Lord, who spend their time, O oh God, listening to your words. May you bless them spiritually, and I know everything will follow, Father, according to your will. And thank you, Father, once again, we glorify you, we, ma we magnify your name, and this is what we pray, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you po sa inyo, God bless po, magkita-kita po tayo muli.